Reverend Louise Obispo, California. Hello. Yes, hello. Um, I'm wondering what um, uh, a, a staffer uh, would to do besides go to the press in Washington. My daughter has just left there uh, after working for a prominent senator and could not get through with her problems at all. And the only thing she could have done was go to the press, and she chose not to do it out of respect for him. Or she had a story to tell, but out of respect for the person she worked for, she didn't tell it. That's true. Actually, I tried to tell the story um, to some extent in 1993 um, in the sense that I wanted to talk about it, but I was too afraid. My mother had encouraged me to file a police report, and I did not, and I should have. Um, so I filed a sexual harassment um, claim or just I filled out a paper and then did not hear back. Can you give us the circumstances, how you ended up, uh, what was the day, how you ended up alone with Joe Biden? Explain what happened that day. Um, I was approached by my supervisor. She handed me a gym bag and said, hurry, Joe wants you wants this, um, so get it to him. He's meet you down towards the Capitol. And I went down the stairs and... I don't remember exactly where I was um, because there's connections between the Russell building and, and all of that and the corridors. But we were in a semi-private location. It wasn't a room. It wasn't the Russ, you know, the Russell office building. It was, I mean, in the Russ, his office. It was down in the corridors. And um, I handed him the gym bag, and then he. It was one, as I described, fluid moment. He was talking to me and he said some things that I don't recall. And I was up against the wall and he, I remember the coldness of the wall. And I remember his hands underneath my blouse and underneath my skirt and his fingers penetrating me as he was kissed, trying to kiss me and I was pulling away. And he pulled back and he said, come on, man, I heard you liked me. But he was angry, it was like a tight voice and he tended to smile when he was angry. And he isn't like the Uncle Joe, like everybody talks about now. He was younger. He was my dad's age at that time and very strong. And he looked insulted and angry. And I remember feeling like I had done something wrong when he said that statement. And then I was standing there when he said, he was still near me. He said, pointed his finger and said, you're nothing to me. You're nothing. And he walked away. And I don't remember exactly where I went after. I think I went to the restroom to clean up, but I don't remember precisely. The next memory I have is sitting on the cold stairs in the Russell building back stairs where the big windows are. And I remember just my whole body shaking. And I remember knowing that, knowing that I had made him angry and that my career was probably over and I didn't comply and I didn't comply when I was asked to serve drinks at a cocktail party for donors because apparently Joe Biden said according to a legislative staffer that I had pretty legs and he thought I was pretty and I should serve the drinks and my supervisor had encouraged me to do so and I did not um, so Sitting on those stairs, the reality hit me. The next thing I remember was that night and talking to my mom, and she was like, you need to file a police report. It's a sexual assault, and I didn't think of it as sexual assault, and I didn't really understand, and I was trying to just get over the shock of it because I looked up to him. He was supposed to be a champion of women, and I was so thrilled to be at that office and so honored, and it shattered my life and changed the trajectory of my whole career in life and I lost my job after I complained and I was fired. 